Uh, let me speak to a civil engineer, Abdullah Mahama, for his uh, side of this whole conversation. Thank you for joining us. For the procurement experts, this is much ado about nothing. What do you say to this whole debate as a civil engineer? Can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. Yeah, uh, good morning to your viewers. Um, uh, rightly so, what the consultant just said, the uh, procurement expert just said, I have an issue when it comes to um, politicians branding figures here and there with regards to the, the cost of a project. Like he rightly said, um, it, it's much ado about nothing because you would have a project which will be situated in a certain location and there are various components of the same project that can be another, in another location which will vary because of the nature of the land and the, the, the physical features within the neighborhood or the areas where the, the structure is going to be put up. Mm. So, so, what? so mm -hmm. let's say, let's say uh, let's for, circle for instance, mm -hmm. the, the, extent of, the extent of demolition and compensation is part of the cost buildup. If you are putting up a structure or an interchange in an area where you barely have to do any demolition of houses, mm -hmm. that would also affect positively the cost of the project. Okay. And then the, you know, circle interchange is made of composite material. It is basically steel and some small concrete. The, the, the abutment and the piers, which are the support underneath, is a concrete. But the material on top of the abutment and piers is steel. And we all know that steel is too expensive as to be compared to ordinary concrete reinforcement. Mm. So you've told us what will make a project like uh, the circle interchange, though it looks small and less detailed in comparison to the Pokwasi interchange, costs less. What will make a project like the one at Pokwasi? It's very elaborate. We've seen the images and we've seen the works. What will make that cost less than the circle interchange? First and foremost, the, the material. In, at Pokwasi, we are doing about, let's say, 90% of everything there to be pure concrete. The, the the land itself would have played a role that as in the topography the type of soil being uh witness as in doing the the, uh, the training your technical investigation when you do the so mostly when you are starting a, a project like that the, the the basic thing you have to do is the geotechnical investigation that will now determine the extent to which the foundations would have to be erected some of the some of the land when you do some geotechnical investigation at let's say circle Due to the nature of the soil, if it is a made-up ground or a very unsuitable material, you may have to go maybe three times the depth of what is happening at Pukwasi. Secondly, if you look at the, Pukwa, the circling setting, the steel works can be used within a mean, a, a mean average years of 200. It means that when the circle uh, concrete lifespan has come to an end, we can really... Uh, the, uh, is uninstall the steel works, the composite material, demolish the the abutment and piers, reconstruct the abutment and piers, and launch the steel again. Unlike unlike Pukwasi, unlike Tetakwashi, uh, what do you call it, um, Sankara, mm. unlike the uh, Aswa, when mm. that road leave, uh, has gotten to its full lifespan, everything has to be removed. Mm. But with a circle interchange, one material has to be reused for 200 years. Okay. So, like the procurement expert is saying, it's so mind-boggling when, mm. when you hear figures being branded around, when cost, like you said, mm. when you do even all the design we do, doing the design, obviously, there will be changes. I have not come to terms with my 15-year career in construction where a design had been done without any variation or changes. Okay. As and when you are doing the design, mm. external factors warrant necessitate mm. So revision to be done here and there. Okay. So all those things would come to play at the end of the day. That's why when you are done with the work, you have to now go and do what we call an ask those drawing, and the cost, cost, cost consultant will now actually sit down and quantify to be able to come up with a final certificate. The final certificate of every contract shows how much money has entered into the contract, how much money has been spent at the end of the day. So all right. all, that's why mm. when, you are, when you are presenting certificates mm. for payment, we call them interim payment certificate. Interim. Mm. All right, Mr. So Abdullah. Mm. 
Sorry, let me just ask you this briefly before I go to uh, Mr. Atabedu. Looking at the interchange at Seco, could we have used concrete, for example, to lower the cost? It, it depends on the consultants who, who are actually champion the cost. It could be done. But sometimes you're looking at a certain span, okay? Before you use concrete throughout a construction, you have to look at some of the spans that you are actually trying to achieve. Some of the spans cannot be done exactly with concrete. Maybe you are doing a span of, say, 50, 60 meters long. Mm. The, the concrete would be weak in some of the instances where the, the steel works will be more beneficial. Because you are, maybe you are doing a span of, say, more than 30, 40, 50 meters at a time. The concrete would be too... It means that you would have to do a thicker concrete. Because the longer the span, the thicker the concrete will be able to take care of all the bending moment where it's supposed to share the hogging and sagging moment. Okay. But the steel is so strong that it can take a longer span and reduce the thickness so that your clearance... Mm -hmm. You see that when you get to the circle area, they have actually st uh, stated a gun, uh, they have erected a gantry that mm -hmm. every, there's no way a vehicle more than four meter high can go across the, the interchange. Yes. Unlike other areas where we have a five meter clearance. So it is it's the, it's the design concept mm. that has brought about cost and the type of material to use for the circle interchange as against the other interchange. All right, so thank you. Mm -hmm. my, my, my happiness is that my happiness is that the Pokwas interchange, which was initially a three tier, had been re uh, uh, revised to a four tier, a four tier. In that case, you are reducing the conflict of vehicles in all the uh, uh, tiers to the best minimum. Okay. If you compare that one to the Sankara interchange. If you only are coming from uh, GTB towards the police headquarters, mm -hmm. you are under the under the tunnel. Mm -hmm. But when you come from the flagstaff house towards uh, the immigration office or to uh, Independence, uh, what do you call the National Theatre, you would have to stall at a point to allow some of the cars to use the circle, the exactly. roundabout within it. Exactly. That is a conflict. Okay. Where you will not see that that, that thing at the focus. So that's mm -hmm. the beauty of the focus section. Oh, sure. We are in for a good thing. That's all. Thank you for your time this morning. Abdullah Mahama is a civil engineer. Let me come to uh, you, Mr. Atabedu. Finally, why do you think there's so much politics around the cost of projects here in, in Ghana? Okay. So I think before we go to that question, I mm. need to address some of the issues um, um, Quickly, Mr. Mahama raised. Yes. First, um, Circle is close to the sea. Mm -hmm. And it's in an area where the water table is high because of the Odor River that runs close to it. Okay. So that requires you going deeper, reinforcing the soil because uh, the, the concrete, the concrete be, to be able to carry the weight. Now, using steel in an, a place like that, for me, is questionable mm. because it will, it will be subject to rust and it may not last the length of time a steel plate is supposed to last because of salt and oxidation. So my question is, why would anyone design a road in that part? If anything, I thought it should have been swapped the other way around. Mm. Where Pokwasi is much inland, and the sea breeze will not get to that point and rust it earlier. So that is the first flaw in the circle interchange. Um, so let's come back to the question you, yeah, you just the asked. The politics of project costs. The politics of it. It is about the politics of infrastructure. Who has built more infrastructure than who? And if you load the project with cost, then you can say that uh, we invested X amount in capital projects. When those X amounts were generally for probably one item. Now, the, the reason why I say it is a moot argument is that, the reason why I say it's a moot argument is that it is when we go into the costing of the projects and we take the unit rates of all the materials and services that were used, then we'll be able to tell whether there was value for money or not. At this point in time, we can't use our eyes to say that there's mm. value for money here. Okay. Unless we interrogate the figures. Mm. Then we'll be able to tell who has given Ghana value for money spent. Thank you very much for your time. Kovinata Tapedu is a procurement expert, and we've been talking about the politics of project costs in regards to the vice president's recent revelation.